So hello everyone and welcome to the Scientix webinar titled Bringing Online Experiments to Your Classroom with NextLab. My name is Marina Jimenez and I will moderate this session. With us today we have Dr. Anastasia Boyko. Anastasia is a junior project officer at the European School Net Science Education Department. In the NextLab project, she coordinates and supports a team of 19 GoLab ambassadors, lead teachers, promoting inquiry-based science education in their countries and training their colleagues in the use of online laboratories and the GoLab sharing and authoring platforms. Moreover, she uses her extensive knowledge and expertise to promote STEM education in Europe. This webinar will present an overview of the project's inquiry learning model and introduce how to access over 700 inquiry learning activities for classroom use on the project's portal. Then, she will briefly present the recommendations and guidelines of the project that are geared towards teachers at the main, as the main target audience. My colleague Felicia, which is here with the Scientix account, will be helping you with any technical problems you may have, so please write to her privately if you experience any difficulties in attending this session. Please remember to turn down your cameras and microphones. At the end of the session, we will have 15 minutes in which you will be able to address questions to our expert through the chat, but you can still post them during the whole webinar. Also, remember that if you want to receive a certificate, a certificate of attendance, available at the end of the session. That's all from my side, so I leave the floor to Anastasia and I hope everyone enjoys. Thanks. Good everyone. Uh, good evening everyone and good evening Marina. Thanks for uh, presenting me. I hope you can hear me. <laughs> Please confirm. So um, it is a pleasure for me to be a guest speaker for the series of Scientix webinars and uh, many thanks everyone for joining and I hope that the webinar will be interesting to the audience today. Um, as Marina already told you, I will be speaking today about the NextLab project and the benefits it can bring to the classroom. To start with, uh, NextLab stands for Next Generation Stakeholder stakeholders and next level ecosystems for collaborative science education with online labs. It is a European research project and uh, it is co-funded by the European Commission in the framework of Horizon 2020 program. Uh, next lab focuses on introducing inquiry by science education or shortly IBSE in schools and continues the mission of the project called GoLab, promoting innovative and interactive teaching methods in primary and secondary schools. So uh, the next lab project is currently in its uh, second year and it will run until the end of December 2019. The, consor the consortium consists of 12 uh, partnering uh, organizations uh, located in Europe and I will tell you more how to get in touch with them but to to speak a, a bit to, to make a step back a bit and tell you about the um, GoLab project which is uh, uh, which is a um, project the predecessor of the next lab it was very successful in the outreach and in reaching uh, teachers of secondary school. The aim of the GOLA project was to bring remote and online laboratories in the classroom. For teachers, it gave the possibility to enrich uh, their classroom activities with demonstrations and access uh, to some of the best online labs and activities. For students, uh, for students, uh, the GoLab gave an opportunity to gain hands-on experience in science and to motivate them for making scientific career in future, which is very important in um, motivation of uh, next generation of scientists. So, um, students were able were able to conduct experiments using modern laboratory equipment by themselves and under supervision of their teachers they deepen their knowledge in fundamental sciences and uh, basically they they had a hands-on experience in science which is very important at the age of uh, secondary school students so golab developed two main components the first component is the lab repository. 
Uh, or it is uh, called also Go Labs Portal, which offers a larger s selection of labs, applications, or short labs, and inquiry learning spaces, or ILSs. Go Lab Portal contains remote uh, contains remote science laboratories, data archives from science experiments, and virtual models, together called online labs. Um, they are used for large-scale science inquiry learning. With more than 500 online laboratories available now on the portal, teachers are provided with the possibility to conduct scientific experiments in a virtual environment. Apps are dedicated tools that support students in an inquiry learning process. We will see some of them later on in this presentation. I will show you uh, how to add them to the um, learning space. So, and then, of course, inquiry learning spaces are a collection of labs, apps, and additional material, which can be text, video, uh, some links, etc., combined in a five-step inquiry cycle. And I will s explain uh, how the cycle of inquiry works in a bit. So, apps, labs, and ILSs work as gears to to power the um, inquiry learning spaces and. Uh, the second component is GRASP. It's an authoring platform, um, an intelligent editor that allows users to create inquiry learning spaces. It is also called uh, authoring platform because it allows authors, namely teachers, to create a um, learning, learning space for their students from scratch and share it with the colleagues and with uh, students. Um, so, as I mentioned, there, is, uh, there are five phases of inquiry learning. Let's talk about, uh, let's talk about it now. So, uh, you have a grasp uh, of um, what we will be exploring later on on the portal. Uh, Inquiry-based approach to learn sciences and uh, active investigation and experimentation increases students' interest and engagement for science subjects. Uh, there is no doubt that it, it works perfectly with the secondary school teacher, uh, secondary student, sorry, but um, we will see how it's going to be applied also for primary uh, students. Inquiry is an interactive and discovering way of learning that encourages students to ask questions, find new solutions, and understand scientific problems. Its learning cycle presented on this slide consists of um, I'm going to show you with the pointer, consists of uh, five phases. So in the first two phases, the opportunity is given to the students to gather information on a research question, take notes, build hypotheses, or um, questions they want to investigate. The third phase um, includes exploration or experimentation and data interpretation activities. Here, the students collect uh, specific data and check whether a hyp hypothesis is correct or not by conducting personalized online experiments. And during the last two phases, the students learn how to write uh, scientific explanations, linking their hypothesis with the evidence collected during the investigation phase. And further, they are reflecting on their learning processes and outcomes, comparing and discussing them with our other students. And teachers can evaluate learning results on their students and define further steps for the next classes. So to sum up, GoLab inquiry spaces uh, follow the inquiry learning approach while combining both remote and virtual labs and integrate them with a supportive structure, multimedia material, and many other useful apps, which um, uh, leads us to the uh, a bit interactive part of our webinar. So I have a question for you. And you can re respond uh, to it in, uh, in the chat. Why do you think online and remote laboratories can be useful for your classroom, from your point of view? So please share your, um, your answers in the chat and share your opinion with the participants of the webinar. And it's, it's going to be very interesting for me to read <laughs> your replies. And I, I told you about GoLab now. So you would ask, but wait, you're telling us about the GoLab and how 
the, the topic of the webinar is NextLab, so <laughs> why, why NextLab is different from the, its uh, predecessor? What are the new developments um, uh, which were implemented in the uh, NextLab? So it is true that NextLab is built on the previously successful GoLab and it, on its ecosystem, but in the NextLab, it, uh, the project expands the functionality of ecosystem and addresses a wider audience. The existing ecosystem will be enriched with assessment and uh, modeling apps. So our target audience is also expanding with both primary and teachers and pre-service teachers. So here you can see the GoLab aim basically and what was developed within the project and here is the next lab which expanded and included 21st century skills and apps to develop those skills. Um, and also here, uh, ages of students also expanded, starting from six years old, we already target the students, through uh, primary school teachers. Uh, so NextLab provides a wide portfolio of advanced online learning tools in science topics, which contains hundreds of virtual and remote science laboratories, inquiry learning applications, and inquiry learning spaces. Furthermore, we'll, with the use of authoring tool for teachers, uh, they can use to create own cross-curriculum learning scenarios and share them with their students. The, inno the innovative tools of NextLab guide students through the research process, helping them to acquire in-depth understanding of scientific topics, as well as 21st century collaboration and reflection skills. So NextLab aims to increase the number of teachers and students involved in the project activities, and using inquiry learning tools in their classroom, it addresses in-service and pre-service teachers and serves primary and secondary school, uh, schools across Europe, providing innovative online learning tools even for younger students. As I told you, uh, at age of six, we can already use uh, inquiry learn spaces uh, to ensure an early positive attitude towards science and technology. Furthermore, NextLab addresses teacher training institutions and teacher train, uh, trainers who are supported in creating their own training material and organizing workshops centered around, um, centered around inquiry-based science education in schools. This way we target uh, pre-service teachers. Finally, online lab owners are welcome to publish their remote labs and virtual simulations at the sharing platform and increase the visibility and attraction of their tools for, the, for uh, diverse groups of stakeholders. Not to mention that uh, teachers can do it in their own languages, so uh, the platform allows to publish um, online material in any language of your choice, which is uh, great. I think it's uh, an amazing tool. And um, so, what are the benefits for teachers? Um, I would like to summarize it in four words. So it's global online science labs. Scientific laboratories loca located all over the world can be accessed by students from different countries via the GoLab portal to conduct personalized experiments and gain hands-on experience in science. Well, can you, can you imagine it doesn't matter where the learning activity takes place? Now it is possible to use high-tech scientific facilities remotely. For example, your students can control a robot or a telescope. They can study chemical reactions or bio biological process. If you teach astronomy or physics or, for example, electronics, mathematics, chemistry, biology, environmental uh, sciences, or almost any other scientists, actually. You can extend your class with appealing demonstrations and experiments. The possibility to use online models, remote labs, and virtual simulations of real scientific laboratories is provided by uh, research institutes and organi organizations such as CERN, Nucleo, and ESA. So if by now I didn't convince you that online labs are cool, <laughs> Uh, let's explore together the portal, and I'm going to show you how, um, wh what are the benefits for you, and uh, let's switch to more practical side of this um, webinar. Let's see in 
practice how exactly NextLab can bring online laboratories in your classroom. So I'm going to share the screen now uh, with you to show, um, to show how actually the ecosystem works. Yes. And first of all, let's go to the portal which I mentioned, which, which is a collection of online laboratories. It is called golabs.eu. You can type together with me to try, uh, to try it out for yourself because um, it's very interesting to interact with the platform uh, directly. So if you go to www.golabs.eu, you, uh, you will be um, on the website, which is called Golabs uh, Portal. And here is the collection of labs, apps, and uh, inquiry learning spaces is available. And you can see here already the, um, the landing page is saying like lab and app. It marks the different parts of the portal. But let's go to labs and explore a bit more what are those online uh, creatures here. <laughs> so find online labs. How to find them? For example, you teach astronomy or biology or chemistry you can search here in the repository by subject domain. Or you would like to have either remote lab or virtual lab or a data set. You can do it. You can search by lab types. You can also um, adjust your search by clicking on the ages of your students. And of course, there is a multilingual uh, Oh, wow, it's uh, more than 40 languages now uh, added here, thanks to teachers who contributed, uh, their, uh, who contributed um, to the translations of the portal, actually. Thank you very much. So it's a big variety of online laboratories here. And here you can actually propose the lab by yourself. If you notice something in the internet you would like to add to the uh, repository, it's not there for now. You can propose a lab to us, and we will publish it in the portal. But let's go uh, a bit more to specificities. For example, you teach, um, you teach physics. And it's interesting for you to show students the laboratory, which um, which is called Splash. Uh, and if you click, I'm going to go back and show you. So there is a list of laboratories, and I didn't choose it. It's uh, most viewed laboratories. So for example, I like this Splash, and I click on it. I, um, I open the window with the description of the laboratory with some screenshots, and with the uh, description, more detailed description, where this laboratory comes from. And you can actually preview uh, the laboratory on, in your browser. So let's preview the lab. So I'm going to switch to the, this one because it's more demonstrative. So here are the, um, the beakers with different, um, different sizes of balls. And there is uh, water here. So on top, you can change a mass of, of the balls here. And you can run the simulation. You immediately see the result. And there is a table of what happened. There is a table of mass and um, density of the ball, of each ball here in every beaker. So it's um, very attractive and very simple at the same time. The uh, a demonstration of physical process. So there are several uh, several bookmarks here. I'm not gonna play with everyone uh, with every and each uh, bookmark. You can do it by yourself now. So the uh, this laboratory is called Splash. I really like it because it, it can demonstrate the uh, process easily, and uh, you have all the data here displayed on your uh, on your screen. And um, so 
let's uh, see apps. As I told you, the, there are there are many applications for your learning uh, scenarios, and what what you can uh, find here is, for example, Padlet, a collaborative tool, then Data Viewer, Periodic Table, which was very useful for uh, many subjects in science, and then there are uh, different tools, which I, I will show you how, how to use it in a bit, and then, of course, Spaces. It's a, you can find here all the spaces published by now by teachers and also uh, created by teachers for teachers. So how you search? You search by, again, by domain, by age ranges and languages. For example, I want to, uh, to have inquiry learning spaces in physics, again, in this, um, with the use of this laboratory. So I go to the laboratory called Sinking and Floating. Actually, it's on, in my bookmark. But you can search here by inputting Sinking and Floating. And you will find it immediately. So here you have ILSs related to Sinking and Floating process. And I like this one. So again, you have a description of uh, inquiry learning space, average learning time, which is very important for planning your lessons, subject domains, which are related to this ILS, and um, a short description and prior knowledge requirements. Students should know, in this case, the concept of mass, volume, and density. And I would like to preview, again, wh what is this um, ILS about? I click on preview here again I'm showing you preview and then it takes a bit of time to go here so this is the preview of uh, inquiry learning space as you can see there are five steps on inquiry already uh, injected in this inquiry learning space as I told you there are orientation conceptualization investigation conclusion and discussion so where to find our lab so I, I see the text here, the videos. Let's see conceptualization. Here is the lab which we recently previewed. It's already in your lesson plan. Uh, and there is some addition of text provided by a teacher to, or, uh, to lead the students through the learning process. And there are, again, some videos and some apps inserted in the inquiry learning space. And what if you would like to use the same, the same inquiry learning space? You then, in, instead of preview, you have to duplicate space. And it's going to open in Grasp tool. First of all, you have to have an account in Grasp. So if you go to www.grasp dot eu here you will uh, you will be asked either to log in or to create an account so without this uh, you you will not be able to create an inquiry learning space you will be able only to preview it on the website of uh, GoLabs I have already an account so I um, I log in it takes a bit of time also, you can log in with Facebook and Google+, Plus, but it's better to register because then you have all the, um, all the functionalities uh, in your profile. So here how the laboratory actually work, uh, looks like in your um, RASP account. You can change the view of it to see the content. Again, here are the five phases of inquiry. They didn't disappear. They are here. And the content is here as well. So we copied this. But it's not very nice to copy the already existing laboratory because you would like to maybe adjust it to your uh, students' needs. You would like them to learn uh, different things, to explore different tools. And you would like to adapt it. It's easy to be done. You just need to uh, move things around. You, uh, you can add files, 
you can add links, whatever you would, you would like to show to your students. And here is the laboratory, actually. So everything is here already. And here they can um, play with application to, um, to um, for example, here they can, um, they can drag and drop the different types of properties of the material and see the, uh, and uh, predict the result, uh, depending on the measurements, of course. So, and here is this thing uh, about, which is uh, also appears, which also appears on the um, Golops portal. And there is a uh, there is a teacher's view actually. This is this is the teacher's view. When you see all the content, you you can modify it. You can work collaboratively. If you add, if you share this space here with any teacher of your school who is working on the same uh, or a similar subject, and you would like to have a collaborative project with your students and with other teachers, you can add an editor to this uh, inquiry learning space and you, you will work collaboratively on the content. But what, uh, how, how students would see this um, inquiry learning space? For this, you have to click here, share, and show standalone view. And then your student will be able to provide his or her name and work on the laboratory. Actually, you can see that nothing can be changed from students' um, view. So they, they are able only to read, to preview, to, to, um, to use the tools to work on labs, but they are not able to change anything in the content. So, and then you can add the apps, for example, to track their activity and to give them the feedback or to track their time with which they spent during um, the class on this, this, specific, um, on this specific stage of inquiry or in total for an inquiry learning space. So this is very useful and I'm going to show you now, this, this was a copy of, um, of already ready to use inquiry learning space. What you can do is to find some inquiry learning spaces in your language, maybe. If you don't find them, you can contrib contribute to the translations, or it's uh, the most um, suitable thing. It's to create your own inquiry learning space. What you have to do, it's uh, only to have an account in Grasp. So I'm going, uh, sorry, Grasp. Dot EU, and I open my own profile. So you see, I have already sinking and floating laboratory here, uh, also an query learning space, which I copied to my profile, but I would like to create a new one. So I'm home on Grasp, and I'm going to click here to create an item. And I have a choice to create a space or create a ILS. It's better to create an inquiry learning space and say, let's name it test. And basic scenario includes five steps of inquiry. But this is the basic uh, inquiry. Uh, these are the basic inquiry phases. You can use different um, scenarios. And the description of these scenarios is available in um, in the portal, I'm going to show you a bit later what are the tutorials we provide to support you. But now let's uh, create the uh, the ILS from scratch. So I put the title of inquiry learning space. I choose basic scenario, and then I create an ILS. Basically, I click, and here it is. I open it, and there are again five phases of inquiry, but they are empty. So to add the content here, you can do many things. For example, you would like to add a laboratory to investigation phase. So 
you choose investigation, you click on it, and you add um, a lab. And you need to know only the title of, of the laboratory, which you can search, as I showed you before, uh, by age, by knowing the age of students, by knowing the subject, and so on. So again, let's uh, see the... Oh, okay, let's see crit craters on Earth and other planets. It's an interesting topic, I think, for you guys. So I clicked on the lab. I chose the lab from the drop-down menu. And here it is. It's in English, but you can switch between languages. After you add the laboratory, it's going to uh, appear automatically in English, but you can choose the language. Of course, not all of the laboratories are available in all uh, the languages of European Union, but there are many which support multilingual um, software. For me, it's English, it's OK. And then I have Impact Calculator, which I ordered basically from <laughs> from the repository. And here I can already interact with the Earth, Moon, and Mars. Let's start our simulation. And you can here, um, here choose different parameters of the simulation. For example, here is velocity, angle under which the meteorite will impact the Earth, because I chose the Earth in the beginning. And you can choose the density of the object, iron, dense rock, or ice, or something else, and target. Will it land on water or rock? I prefer water, and I prefer it. Uh, the meteorite will be iron. And then the velocity, let's say 34 kilometers per second, angle 28, and then the size of of the meteorite is 5,000 meters in diameter. And this huge rock gonna hit the Earth. I did something wrong, so it gives me an error, but it's fine. Distance from crash site. We need to choose this. And we need to submit. Again, error. So, ah, okay. I didn't see this parameter. So you need to play and see how the lab works, more or less. But it's really easy. And then you submit your result. You choose the target, and you hit. <laughs> so and here you can see the values and everything which is interesting to analyze in data and so on. So we added the lab only. Now inquiry learning space uh, consists of only online labs, on only one online laboratory, actually. So if you would like to add some text and lead the students to do investigation or con uh, to draw conclusions or discussion, you can add a relevant application, for example, I don't know which app I would like to add here, so I go to the repository and check which which lab will be most suitable for me. So I go to apps, and for example, I would like students to collaborate in Padlet. So I go back to my um, discussion uh, tab, and I put Padlet here. Sorry. I'm choosing from already existing. Uh, applications. And here, the Padlet appears. So, most probably, you will have to uh, to have an account in Padlet, but I, I don't know what, what should be here. So, if you have an um, a um, URL to Padlet, it's going to be nice to add it here. So, first of all, you have to create Padlet from your account, and then share it with students, I guess. But let's try another app so you see how it works. So select from already existing one. And for example, shared wiki is also suitable for, um, for the discussion. And here, it's empty, of course, because I just added it. But when students will see this uh, inquiry learning space, they can fill in their the information here, 
and it will appear to you and to other students, which is very important to uh, in collaboration. And then you have students dashboard and teachers dash dashboard, but it's also again visible only for you. And show standalone view. Let's see what we created. So I have one uh, online uh, laboratory in my ILS and uh, one application. And the student sh uh, has to see the same. So orientation, nothing within that. Anything, conceptualization, investigation. Here is our laboratory. And students can also interact with it easily. But uh, most probably, you will have to provide them with some context. So it's not going to be meaningless um, play, play, uh, play uh, ground here. And it's going to be actually learning and in the discussion we are supposed to have our Wikipedia here students can add some information and you can track the history who uh, wrote what and on which date so to sum up a bit we learned today about online laboratories which are available for you in the um, in the Go Labs, we learned also about applications and inquiry learning spaces that um, that support inquiry learning in the classroom. And we learned how to create uh, and duplicate ILSs for your use, and that there is a huge variety of subjects that are covered with the online laboratories and inquiry learning spaces for you for you to use uh, and to try. I really recommend you to go online to these uh, two websites. I remind you it is called... Um, I'm going to go back to my slides now. Uh, sorry. Sorry, guys. I somehow cannot do it. Uh, Felicia, can you help me because I cannot get out of... Um... Ah, okay. Stop sharing. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, here. So I'm gonna go to my presentation and... And so what we learned today, five steps to your inquiry learning space. We went through it all over and what I recommend you um, is to go to uh, GoLabs portal here www.golabs.eu and to uh, register in GRASP and join the uh, huge community of teachers who already use these tools and they actually can help you with the uh, use of the tools which NextLab supports and provides to teachers and uh, please explore these uh, options because they are super nice you can um, use remote laboratories, you can use online laboratories, you can motivate your pupils and um, it's, um, it's a very nice uh, supportive material to your, um, to your everyday classes. Let's do science a bit of fun for students because that's how they will learn with pleasure. And uh, to tell you a bit how to find us online, so I already mentioned GoLabs portal. About the NextLab project, you can find out via this link. And we are available in social media. We share our updates and uh, we, share, um, we share the information in different languages. So you can follow us in any of uh, suitable social media. And what else here? So, as I mentioned, we collaborate with different teacher training institutes and we also have a representatives um, er, uh, of uh, national contact points uh, in different countries. So, here is the list of expertise centers and here, are the, uh, coverage, here is the coverage of ambassadors of the GoLab. So, do not hesitate to contact them. Um, you can do it through the NextLab website. You will see the emails of your um, 
if you find your country here, of course, you will see the um, the email of a person who is responsible to uh, to provide you with the uh, recent information on the project and also the possibilities for you to contribute to the project by joining online trainings and face-to-face -face trainings. And thank you for your attention. If there is there are any questions from you guys, I will be uh, delighted to answer them. Uh, I thank think. You, um, yeah. Thanks, Marina. It's, yeah. Yeah, I thought I thought the before you finished it. And I I wrote them down. Uh -huh. um, there was uh, both responded, but uh, by I think OLAP teachers. But I wanted to ask okay. you. Okay. Uh, about this. Um, the first one is about the resources. If they're for primary, secondary, which are the ages that you can find resources? For? So, uh, starting from six years old, you can find already the resources. I'm gonna go back with my slides because here are the ages which we cover. So, students can be. Uh, the the youngest will be six, and the oldest are eighteen. But for some schools, it can be nineteen also, because uh, you never know uh, how the system works in different countries. So we we try to target uh, the youngest pupils in the next lab, which was not covered in the goal lab. We only targeted secondary school teachers mostly, and now we actually. Trying to um, trying to aim at pre-service uh, teachers who will teach uh, primary students, like uh, starting from six, seven years old, because we need to start young <laughs> with this. Exactly. Uh, so yeah, six to eighteen, nineteen. Um, there was a um, there was some questions from Alexia, and she was um, I think she was asking whether the graph platform can can be accessed. At home, and I think she was referring whether you can get, get accounts for students or only for teachers. So, I think there were some. Yeah, I'm going to explain how it works. So, uh, the teacher registered on the platform, and uh, he or she develops the inquiry learning space, and then students can access uh, through the standalone view, as I showed you, without any login to the platform, because we uh, really don't want to know <laughs> the information behind the uh, emails. So we try to um, to respect the privacy of students. We don't require anything, uh, any email addresses from students. It's only teachers uh, who will register in GRASP, and the students can access. Um, through this standalone view with their name, or maybe a teacher would prefer to give them nicknames, for example, to uh, hide their names. And then teacher knows who, uh, which name, which nickname corresponds to which student. And uh, students can work uh, in the class if they have, of course, the facilities to do it, like a computer or a tablet. Uh, actually, Grasp is compatible with any device because it's uh, a browser. Uh, it, it uses browser, and uh, you can access it through mobile uh, via the Padlet. Oh, sorry, via the tablet, <laughs> and uh, of course from computer. Students can work either in the classroom or. Um, at home also, so uh, teachers can track afterwards the activities of students, or it can be uh, mixed. Also, the if you, um, the flipped classroom uh, approach is, uh, can be used here. Okay, thank you. You also uh, answered another question that I was going to answer ask, which was whether they could use it in tablets or stuff. Mm -hmm. But as you said, it's compatible. Um, I'm not sure if there is any other question. Um, since we still have time, um, I'm going to need five more minutes to see if there's... Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Maybe comments. some comments like about the question I asked here earlier. It's also interesting yes, for I... me and for teachers to hear the comments. Yeah, yeah. yeah I wrote down some uh, whether laboratories were useful or not and some comments um, that I wrote down were that um, they're useful when materials are not available, they're easy to handle, Students are active, active, sorry, and responsible. It's engaging, it's engaging and attractive for students. It promotes collaborative learning. It can be used at home. It provides with a lot of resources. Um, it's simple to understand. It saves teachers time. Uh, yeah, cool. It promotes. <laughs> there was a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, I didn't expect that much uh, <laughs> engagement <laughs> actually. 
yeah it promotes entire learning process it saves teacher time i think i said yeah. that one it's very safe for students and it's inexpensive uh, if anyone thinks that I missed something, please uh, leave it on the chat now. Yeah, this is true. It's not even inexpensive. It's for free. It's free of charge. So uh, all the material you work on and everything you own, it's your own work. It not No one going to charge you for anything on this platform. It's totally open for ev everyone to join. So uh, if you would like to use online laboratories, you, you just need to try it simple. And with the, uh, actually, I wanted to share with you uh, one more thing. I'm, I'm going to share my screen again, because um, there is a lot of interesting material, which I, I mentioned, but I didn't uh, actually show. show. So here, uh, we have labs, apps, spaces, and then support. If you go to support, there are like video tu tutorials, how to work how to register, how to uh, to copy existing ILS. It's basically the same what I explained to you briefly. It is available in your own time and it's available um, online. Here, user manuals, where you can find uh, the different learning scenarios in your, well, it covers a lot of languages, so I most probably you will find the language <laughs> you are speaking. And tips and tricks and big ideas of science and what is I, I would like to share and focus on its online course which is um, self-paced it's not um, it, it doesn't give any certification but uh, in the end there is an exercise and there are actually several exercises so you can enroll in the course and follow in your own pace and learn about much more than I told you <laughs> today about the online laboratories in the classroom, how to use them, where they are uh, applicable, and here are the tutors which provided the material for the online course. They are our partners in the uh, in the uh, in the next lab. So, and the explanation it's a module. Um, it's uh, eight weeks basically, but since you will work on in self-paced mode, you can take this course uh, for whatever weeks you would like to. So I think it's going to be useful for um, for people. OK, Th thanks for, for this answer, Anastasia. Um, some people are asking to share the URLs. We're going to share them in the chat. Uh, so OK, uh, just the URL to grasp. Yeah, URL OK, no problem. Share. Yeah, 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 sure. So. But don't worry, uh, this is on it at the moment. And uh, I think there was a question about, I think there's interest on the type of resources available on the platform, because some people were asking if there's something related to Steam or what kind of... So yeah, so I don't know if the platform by, by itself, it's, um, it's a STEM platform. So you find online laboratories uh, related to science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. But you can develop any project which is cross-curricular or um, you would like to work with art, te art teachers or uh, with physical, uh, sorry, I don't know how it is called in English, physical training teachers <laughs> who does physical exercises with students. So it's going to be also like linked to biology. Why not? It can be easily implemented uh, without um, laboratory, online laboratory injected in inquiry learning space, but it can follow, uh, still follow five steps of inquiry, which is perfect for uh, for students. Uh, nice. Uh, I see some people sharing some resources. Yes, I noticed. Yeah, they cannot stop. <laughs> and emails also, guys. <laughs> You're very interactive today, I see. <laughs> Thanks, uh, thanks very much for uh, participation. I see a lot of thank you and nice resources. And I see actually Golab ambassadors joined today. So uh, if I'm not mistaken, Geraldine and Nada is here. And then uh, Pretty. OK, nice to, uh, to see you online, guys. <laughs> so those people will actually uh, be able to help you in your uh, countries. 
and they are GoLab ambassadors, so um, they, they will uh, support you uh, if they have online training or face-to-face -face training, they will be able to send you an invite and um, you can atten attend if it's uh, ne near you or uh, if you would like to go to some other place in your country. Please go ahead and contact them. I'm going to show now the. Um, I'm going to share now actually the link where you can find the email addresses of the ambassadors. Wait a minute. You all, just a reminder to the participants that if you want to receive the certificate of attendance to the to the webinar, you have to fill in the survey that Felicia has just shared on the chat. So go and click on the link if you want the certificate. And here is the uh, contact uh, email addresses. If you find your country, please, uh, you're welcome to contact our GoLab ambassadors. They are very active and <laughs> they, they will be more than happy to support you. Okay, so I'll give it a couple more minutes. Then if there's any, if there's no more questions, then we, we will be yeah, able sure, to close it. Sure. So I hope I was on time. <laughs> You were super on time. Okay. I didn't want to overwhelm people because uh, it's uh, a lot of things to learn uh, and uh, 45 minutes it's more than enough but uh, then they are super overwhelmed and uh, the information is very dense, you know. So um, I hope they will explore by themselves and uh, go the, through this um, material I shared. And I would like to say uh, thank you uh, to Scientix for hosting the webinar. It's a uh, it's a nice uh, nice opportunity to share the project uh, and the activities we we do in Next Lab. Yes. Um, well, I think I just see thank yous on the chat. <laughs> yeah, I see. So, much <laughs> so thanks, Anastasia, again for hosting for showing Next Lab today, and I hope everyone enjoyed it. And that's all for us. Uh, just a reminder, you'll get an email um, as a follow-up for this webinar, and you will be able to see this presentation, the recording of this presentation, on the Scientix website soon. And that's all from my side. Thanks again, Anastasia, and to everyone attending, see you in the next time. Thank you very much, yeah. girls. Thanks for support, and thank you very much for attending. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.